welcome to the Deep Radio Podcast. My name is Sean and joining me today is one and only Marco Hall Jeffrey. Mr. Hey Shay, how are you? Good. It feels like I'm finally getting a standard introduction. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's sort of standardised. Um, yeah, everyone's getting initials. Mm. And I like saying HJ because it's the initials for right. Hungry Jacks. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hongle Jongle. Yeah, <laughs> Hongle yeah, Jongle, yeah, yeah. HJs. I thought it could be like a bee shopping or like a, you know, a, a, a uh, Holden Berries or like a, you know, um, hey, mate, maybe. my son. Um, what's his name? What? Schooner. Schooner Holden Jeffrey. Schooner Holden Jeffrey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. Man, oh, we do have a laugh here, don't we? The oh, we do, we do. Um, we're sitting a bit different this time. We're sitting side by side on the couch watching a 10-hour volcano <laughs> compilation. Uh, just because just we were sitting down watching some basketball highlights and we thought, let's try to hit record like this. Um yeah, it's feel it's good so far. It is, it is. I'm in the early days of uh, the JVG NBA tribute show before we dropped the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> we, me and Lucas, I, I, we tried so many different arrangements of sitting. Like, yeah. I think we did a couple on his bedroom floor for for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, it brings a different vibe. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's going to be a completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, before we start the pod, just to get stuff out of the way, uh, by the time you're listening to this, or maybe not, there's going to be a social media post, because we've got new merch, we've got hoodies, we have some hoodies designed by a friend of the program, Annalise, and they are now available, mm. we have 60, minus the ones we've already sold, so maybe 50, yeah, um, hotcakes, I haven't even started yeah. selling them, oh, and since Sean started talking, 40, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're selling, selling hoodies. You're going to see a designer on our socials, but if you'd like to buy one, just message us. We don't have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know you know the drill. It's like the hot sauce, all that other stuff. Um, we got them in all the sizes, right? Small, yeah, medium, large, large, extra large. There's a 2XL to go. There's a spare 2XL. Yeah. Um, and how much do they cost, Sean? $69. What it, a bargain. I can't believe it's that simple. <laughs> it's just the funny number. Yeah, yeah. Think to yourself, if you're wondering how much the hoodies are... It's either one of the two funny numbers, and it's not four hundred. No way, absolutely not. Or four dollars. Yeah, we're, we're not supreme. <laughs> <laughs> we're not selling the deep two brick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do that. A branded brick. I've, I've been thinking a lot. Not actually, but I've been thinking a lot about like the next merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, what yeah. are we going to put your uh, redacted, redacted design on? <laughs> the design you were telling me about. Oh, a true. Of weeks ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be good on a shirt. And it'd be good on a hoodie. But mm. is there something? I know Confidence Man, you know, they're, yeah, yeah. they've got heaps of funny merch, like mm. um, they've got business cards and it's just a metal business card shaped yeah. thing that you just leave into, if you ever need to just like sort of chop some stuff up, mm. it's always in your wallet. Yeah, I like that. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, love, I love like a mug, a mug that says like, world's greatest podcast with five male co-hosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like... Don't talk to me until I've listened to my weekly episode <laughs> yeah. of the JVG Tribute Show. <laughs> Don't talk to me until I've listened to, to, to either the Deep 2 NBA podcast, the JVG NBA yeah. Tribute Show, the Four Man Weave, or the Quick Time Out with Sean Carroll, or yeah. the W Basketball Show. Yeah, well, for, you said Four Man Weave. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely possibilities. Yeah. Um, also at the top of the, uh, the top of the pod, <laughs> Lucas wrote an article. The uh, WNBA season has started. Lucas does his uh, annual now. This is the third year. Yeah, he's done it. wow, that's awesome. His storylines article. So he looks at five storylines that interest him and why they should interest you. Mm. Um, check that article out. It's a really good way just to if you're getting into the WNBA or if you you know want to just see what Lucas thinks about the WNBA. Yeah. Give it a click, give it a read, stay on the page for at least a minute 27, and that does numbers for us on WordPress. And uh, yeah, check that out. And then also another article, when it rains, it pours. Uh, Matt Parnell wrote an article on the clash of styles in the New York Knicks versus Indiana Pacers series. Um, really, really good article. Another yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful little bit of work by yeah. Matt Parnell. Um, in a series that, like, we're not going to talk about the Pacers and the Knicks today, mm. but, like, the fact that it's like, Oh my god, game five, this is gonna be incredible. Halbert has just had two point yeah. five good games in a row. And then he just shits the bed and then the Knicks just blow them out. It was like thirty points at one yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been such an interesting series, but also like I can't help but think whoever emerges from it is gonna be so badly beaten up that yeah. it's gonna be absolutely no challenge for Boston. Yeah. Who who uh, won their series against the Cleveland yeah, Cavaliers yeah, yeah. today. Um but but it has it's been a really fun watch, like um just yeah yeah and another good another good article by Matt yeah yeah um 
we didn't talk about the Cavs Orlando series much because it yeah. quite frankly bored <laughs> us. Uh, the the fucking Cavs would have paid, played twelve playoff games. We haven't talked about them once <laughs> until today. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna get to that yeah. also Tuesday's pod uh, yourself and Lucas I really liked you were scratching the wall of your prison cell the days to count down <laughs> until you're doing the W basketball show WNBA over unders mm, yeah wow. yeah it was yeah it was a really really fun episode um, it's been a what you guys have done it what five times now for the men's for the WNBA yeah, four, 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 four. Because we, we our first season was 2019, and we came in during the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, and it is it is one of the funnest exercises, like gearing up to a season. It makes you really mm. other WNBA seasons. I'm like, oh yeah, that'll be good. Like blah, blah blah. This one, I'm like, okay, now I know all 12 members yeah. of uh, <laughs> you know of the Indiana Fever. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. paying attention to you know every single little move they've made and everything. Mm. Um, you know, I think in in classic Marco and Lucas fashion, we didn't disagree that much, but we disagreed enough to make it interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I put in your numbers today. And mm. I was like, oh my God. Like, I listened to it and I was always like, oh, that's nice. Like, you know, you're agreeing. Oh, that's nice. You're agreeing. And I put it in. I was like, holy fuck. We got like, there's the battleground states. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, literally yeah. a red or blue state. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that you're fighting, <laughs> that you're fighting over. But... That's also good because then uh, you can both pat yourselves on the back when you get them right. Or yeah. You can both say, ah, fuck, it's just a game, bro. Fuck off. Exactly. <laughs> it's just the way the electoral college works, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe. What, can... what you think about the Minnesota Lynx. Uh, <laughs> you can rearrange the borders. Um, yeah, but big, big uh, Deep Two Podcast mm. Network uh, week. This is, this is fucking. How good is this? This is what we were talking about yeah. when we were at that bar in Fitzroy. <laughs> this is this is the the sort of week that we've talked about before and that we love to bring to you, the listener slash reader. Hundred percent. And you know, you've been you've been killing on the socials now where like you know, sorry, this is this is this is gonna be more for you than for the listener. <laughs> but when you when you uh when you quoted Lucas in uh one of it from his article mm. um at the deep two com, uh and it was like, oh, you can quote Lucas both from the podcast and from the website. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's getting he's getting grabbable quotes yeah, left, right, yeah, and fucking yeah. center. Like, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's just like, yeah, this is a nice progression coming along. It yeah. feels like a normal part of my newsfeed. You know, um, that reminds me a bit of I was listening to the Bill Simmons pod uh, today, <laughs> and him and the fucking old radio hack that they had mm-hmm. on today. They were talking about the Denver Nuggets, and then like they're just going back and forth, back and forth, and then Bill's like. He starts to say a point and he goes, ah, I don't want to just like slob over the nuggets. And I'm thinking like, you know, you sort of say that, but then you quickly get your point in and move on. <laughs> we just moved on. He was like, ah, actually maybe like that's a little bit too good praise because they had just spent like 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the, yeah, the yeah. one thing that they'd said, which this is off topic, but they were just like, look, you know, like Jokic is just, he's passing, he's infectious. Like, you know, they've got KCP like making the right pass. They've got Aaron Gordon making the extra pass. Like Jamal Murray shoot first, but he's also knows how to pass mm. and stuff. And there's like, oh, uh, Michael Porter Jr. has not affected him whatsoever. Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> does still not know how to pass. Even though playing with maybe the greatest passer of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And he but, doesn't want to, more importantly. <laughs> that's, that's literally it. But let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves versus Denver Nuggets. The last time you and I were on a pod, Marco uh, Hungry Jacks, we, were, we did Foreman Weave, which was seven days ago yep. from today when we had the old Australian salami over there. That's exactly right. And um, how much can change in seven days in the NBA? Fucking oath, man. And like, I, I, I said something, I said a few cringe things that mm-hmm. episode. And I said shit like, you know, this is where champions fucking, you know, this is where they prove themselves, et cetera, et cetera. Just like, I'm convulsing with how cringe it is. But Jokic really fucking turned around. Yeah. And, and like, for, for someone like Jokic who we're seeing just how good the Denver Nuggets are and how much their offense is humming because Jokic has established from early on in these past three wins, which is the first three straight losses for the Minnesota Timberwolves this season. Yeah. Um, but this is the first... Uh, this is the f- He has to establish himself at the start and say, hey, look, where I, I need to prove that I can beat my matchup. And then off that, all of a sudden, everything just works. Mm. Um, and a little bit of Aaron Gordon, like dribbling it down and Aaron Gordon just getting past like the, the big men who can't pick him up mm. full court. But it's been like a massive, like the title of this episode is Nikola Jokic's Legacy. Like, where do you want to go from here? Yeah, I mean, because I, th- I think it's worth mentioning before, like the kind of mastery of Jokic in game five, if you will. Like game three and four was just Denver just making like 
just enough adjustments, mm. you know? Like, I think the the huge wins, like, the huge wins that Minnesota had in games one and two, like, the great success they had on defense, like, it's weird that the Nuggets didn't actually have to adjust that much to, like, kind mm. of overturn it. Mm. It was, like, you're saying little things like, yeah, like, Aaron Gordon bring the ball up. I mean, I'm, I'm stealing half of these from thinking basketball. <laughs> but, like, uh, you know, uh, when Jokic is going to uh, set a pick for Jamal Murray, someone sets, you know, sets a screen on on his man, which was usually Cat, to, like, kind of make it a bit harder for him mm. to stick with Jokic once the, you know, the um, ball handler pick and roll actually happens. Um, but it was... Like, just those tiny, tiny little things were just enough to completely collapse the yeah. Minnesota defense. Like, the second that Jokic was on Rudy, like, not only, you know, is that a great one-on-one matchup for him, but then it means, oh, either, like, the double's coming and then their defense mm. is breaking mm. down. Um, and, like, I was having I was having this thought, um, and again, like, just before we actually get to game five, like... The reason Minnesota was so good in game one and two is like Jokic, he's one of those players that is like maybe four or five steps ahead of, mm. of like of, of the defense of the opposition. Like he's always thinking like, oh, if they do that, then I do that. Then that happens and that happens and mm. that happens. Mm. I think most of the Minnesota side are maybe can think like three or four steps ahead. Yeah. And like, that's kind of enough to like slow Jokic down, get him out of his game, yeah, like yeah. stop him from just having complete and utter dominance. But I think Carl Anthony Towns can only think one step ahead. No. <laughs> like, Maybe he's just <laughs> living in the moment. Yeah. 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 But like, obviously like, you know, he has improved as a defender, like yeah, under yeah. Chris Finch and Chris Finch has obviously been like, all right, like this is, this is your job. Like fight over screens, stick with Jokic. Don't let him s- switch on to, um, go bear, uh, and then like, but that's as far as he can take it. Like once there's like <laughs> yeah. a second wrinkle, there are so many times in games three, four and five where he was just in no man's land. Like yeah, yeah. didn't know who was meant to be guarding, didn't know like where he was meant to be rotating to. And it's just very, very startling when like, you know, you have Jaden McDaniels making every decision, right? Rudy Gobert, who knows his limitations, but mm, still like makes mm. the right decision every time. Anthony Edwards, who like, I think he got, you know, like, I think he can get caught out, but he knows he, he's got the like IQ or whatever to yeah, make the yeah. right decision. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, by just making enough adjustments and exploiting like that one weakness, it just collapsed their entire game. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 yeah and, then, and, and like the, yeah, you're definitely right because you've got, you've got Kat who might be sitting in the like mm. defensive half court just waiting because like, if he was on Aaron Gordon, you can obviously sag off a little bit of him when he's in the corner or just sitting behind the three-point line. So all of a sudden Kat's mm. job goes from, all right, I'm sagging off the weak shooter to either bring my seven-foot body over to stop the person trying to shoot yeah. or you know or just simply just sit in the corner and get a rebound. To oh I'm the guy that's I'm the guy that's guarding guarding the ball because Aaron Gordon's like versatile enough to dribble the ball down. If it's not Aaron Gordon, it's Cat. But then as soon as like one of those two aren't guarding Aaron Gordon, then it's like you've got a good shooter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 good. It's like uh, uh, my friend Josh. He I think you might have met yeah, Josh. Yeah, yeah. He um, Mate, met him. Pre- uh, became pretty well acquainted with the Josh last week. Let's say. <laughs> 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 Nah, it took um, you a second. Yeah, it did, it did take me a nah, second. Sorry, go on about it. We, we were having a chat a few years ago, like when, when Jamal Murray was like injured, right? Who we were like, he's like, oh, I don't think Denver's going to get past the first round. I'm like, I really think they will. And he's mm. like, but like, who's who's doing it? I'm like, well, Jokic is obviously amazing, but like, this was against the uh, mm. against the Blazers. And it's like, well, you can just put Aaron Gordon on him. When, when worst comes to worst, like, you can just put Aaron Gordon on him, and all of a sudden it's not Will Barton who's got him. Yeah, shit, yeah. Right? Um, and he's like, no, 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 And then I'm like, look, I'm ready to stake my like whole life on Aaron Gordon's a good defender and very versatile. <laughs> yeah. And he's messaged me like, that That would have been three years ago. He's messaged me like once every nine months and has just been like, you were so right. <laughs> I, I won't even be watching basketball and I'll get a message and he'll just be like, yeah, like this is pretty crazy. Like it's crazy that he's doing this. And he obviously messaged me during the, yeah, the finals yeah, yeah. run last year. 
And I'm just thinking about it now. Like, I haven't received a message yet. But it's like, <laughs> this. he's always had the defensive versatility. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, oh, he actually, like, he used to be an on-ball guy in Arizona. And, like, he used to, like, Orlando were trying to make him be the guy to, like, yeah. score off the dribble. So it's like, as soon as he's not a fucking all-star scorer, he can still dribble. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, it's cool. You got the two seven footers out mm. there. At, at fucking at some stage, three seven footers. Mm. But maybe Nazarene's like six nine, six ten. But yeah, um, yeah, it's like it's he's just doing it. Like he's it's it's great. Yeah, and I think that's that's like Denver's. Like you know, you can't stress enough how good Denver's five are. Like, yeah, but yeah. I think it is that like every single one of them kind of has more to their game that they don't always have to show. Like, mm. what, KCP's, like, previously, and can be when he needs to be, like, what, the best, one of the best off-the-dribble mid-range scorers in the yeah, game, you know? Yeah, and now yeah. he's like, nah, he's a 3 and D guy. Like, he yeah. catches it. And he does. Occasionally, you'll see him, you know, like, the closeout mm-hmm. comes, he fakes, he takes two dribbles in, and, like, he hits it every yeah, single time. Yeah, yeah. Late in the shot clock, like, you know, he gets to, like, the range he's comfortable with. That's a good shot. Um, but, yeah, it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, just because Aaron Gordon has been, like, Dunker's spot, you know, screener, mm. not a great three point shooter, cutting, catching lobs. Th- doesn't mean that he didn't spend the first, well, you know, probably like his whole college career, yeah, yeah, yeah. his whole high school career, like yeah, yeah, dribbling yeah. the ball. Yeah. yeah, being Kevin Durant. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, let's let's go back to like the the point of the pod. Yeah, <laughs> Nikola Jokic had forty points in forty one minutes, which is what we'll call the uh, the playoff Embiid points per minute bullshit. Um, in the third quarter alone, he had sixteen points and three assists on six of seven. Uh, that quarter had no turnovers because all quarters had no turnovers. Uh, for the game, he was fifteen and twenty two, thirteen assists, zero turnovers, two steals, one block. And I went out for dinner last night, uh, and Chesk's dad was like. Something time basketball, and I was like, I reckon the game today was mm. the best game I've ever seen a human being play. Um, when he was out there, the, when he was when he was out there, the Nuggets had a hundred and sixty nine offensive rating against the four time DPOY, and it's like he's it was the game plan that we've talked about, but he's literally going against him, mm. and like Rudy, and you said it before, like Rudy, like. You know, he, he might not be good in some circumstances, but he's not stupid. Like, yeah. he knows his limitations. Rudy was not failing most of the time. There yeah. might have been, like, one and one that he gave up. And it's just, like... And the stupid shots were, like, Wemby-esque. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that he's taken over him. And, like, some of the shots against the shot clock as well. Mm. Like, it was... It was, like, I, I, I've i watched a lot of Steph and Clay great mm. games. And I would previously have said that they might be my favorite games or the best games mm. I've ever watched. And I went back and looked at the box scores, like Steph Curry, uh, 54 points mm. versus OKC, or the 49 points versus OKC, where he got the bang, bang, buzzer beater. Yeah, you know, it's just every every Steph Curry game, every Clay Thompson game, there was always a turnover. Like, mm. Steph always had, like, six assists, three turnovers, because it was like, you know, every now and again, he's hit a couple of threes, maybe it's time for a behind the back. And that's fucking stick, like, more power to Steph Curry. If you get three turnovers in a game, you're the fucking point guard, it's the NBA that's going to happen. But zero turnovers... 13 assists and like we, we, we were both watching the Thinking Basketball before this as well <laughs> there were a few passes that just didn't lead to points and they yeah, might lead to exactly, free throws yeah, as well Yeah, just the, the points responsible for mm. and to not turn over the ball and like not turning over the ball while you're scoring not turning over the ball while you're like you're rebounding and these long defenders oh, in Minnesota could yeah. just poke it loose yeah and like you know he did so many like uh, long range inbound passes like yeah. so many like get the rebound and just fucking flick it down court and you're like that, one of those has one? yeah, yeah. yeah that was <laughs> like one of those has to go out of bounds yeah, you know yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you're kind of like oh it was worth it for like the yeah, fast break yeah, opportunity yeah. it gave us or what but yeah he was just abs- absolutely perfect 15 of 22 feels like it's it's the Jokic sh- shooting splits <laughs> like yeah, um, yeah just you know like he's 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 never going to be like a 30, 40 field goal attempts yeah, in, in like yeah. a big game. So it's like, cause he doesn't need yeah. to, cause he just like improves his teammates so much. Um, and yeah. And like, I, there was a period in the game where it just felt like he was taking the piss. He's like, cool. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. I got Rudy and ISO. I'm going to like, what I'm going to take him under the basket and then hit a running hook shot over yeah, his head. Yeah, or like, yeah, yeah. you know, um, that little touch pass to himself when, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's like, do you, you even need to do that? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's what we were missing this playoffs was just like, we were, like, D- 
didn't didn't have one in the Lakers series. Uh, he looked actually pretty poor in games one and two. We needed a Nikola Jokic game. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, not. Yeah. I don't think he, you know, I don't think he needed it. I mean, maybe he needed it to save his team yeah. in this series. But like, you know, I don't think he needs to prove to himself that he can do this. But mm. like, it's basketball fans. Like, you watch the playoffs because you want to watch Jokic do this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this is why we play BFPS. <laughs> but, um, uh, fuck, I had a good point. What are you talking about? <laughs> talking about the Lakers? Something, something, Lakers, Jokic. Um, oh, yeah, no, that was the other thing. I'll, I'll make another thing, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, because I think the funny, the, almost the weirdest thing about this game is Rudy was, like, really good defensively when Jokic yeah. didn't have the ball. Like, yeah. he blocked, like... Like like you were saying, Jokic would make a good pass, mm. and Rudy would like recover and like contest or block the shot like plenty mm. of times. If Rudy wasn't in the action as well, it was like kind of like what was happening in game one. In game one, where mm. it was like, all right, well, if Jokic, if Rudy isn't preoccupied with Jokic, then he actually is like an excellent, you know, interceptor and yeah, protector. Yeah, blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. So like, I, it is just like, um, oh, it's just so incredible that he I, like he does he does feel like a Rudy foil in this in this yeah. circumstance and like you know I, I always I always like to bring it back to Terrence Mann you know yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. like there's the, the problem with Rudy Gobert isn't that he's not a good defender because he's an excellent defender it's like yeah. there are ways you can exploit him and once you start exploiting them like it just sort of snowballs and that's what it felt mm. like in this game like, yeah yeah and like when, when we um his name escapes me, but when we when Dante and I had that, the Italian basketball coach. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. What's his name? No, I can't remember. Yeah, um, <laughs> he was just talking about like you know he was pretty much running through Europeans in the yeah, basketball, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and he, uh, yeah, he was like, remember that possession where like Steph Curry made Rudy turn around, right? Like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like he was like it was a great defensive position. Mm. Like Rudy had turned around. But the reason Steph Curry had to keep crossing over is because Rudy stopped him for 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason Steph made the shots because he's Steph Curry. Like, yeah. Rudy Gobert does a good job this whole time. <laughs> and that was the point I wanted to make before because I've, I watched this game. Uh, I watched, I've watched the highlights like three times mm-hmm. and then I saw that like YouTube breakdown. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. And one time I just watched the Wolves players and just, just watched how they reacted to everything. And Rudy, like, more power to him, was like positive after every yeah. possession like there was that one where like Jokic drove base and like he bumped him a little bit and then kept driving base um, and Rudy like went right out to him but then he made that crazy like massive like hook shot over the just stupid shit like that Rudy just like didn't like look at his defense, look at his team. It didn't Rudy? Did, he didn't do anything. It was just like fuck. Like if you're gonna make that, you're gonna make that. And he did that every single time. He was very much like, hey, look, they've just made an impossible shot. I fucking done my job. Mm. But then you look at all the other defensive miscommunications, and a lot of it is on Jokic's assist, where yeah. like he just sees that you're lacking, uh, sees that you're you're looking elsewhere. The the the, the body language from all of the Wolves was yeah. just terrible. Yeah, like, and there were so many like, if you're like Tony Edwards or and like we should mention, let's not talk about it. Let's mention that Mike Conley wasn't out there. Yeah. He's a very good unifying point guard. But every single one of the dudes who was at the three point line was just like what the hell? Like the, uh, their shoulders would either go up, like you have to get out to that or they'll just go down. And they wouldn't say anything like, yeah, fuck, we've just lost another two points yeah. or like whatever, whatever it may be. Yeah. And I think that's another thing to credit Denver for in game five is like in game three and four, like Anthony Edwards still kind of, you know, like he's, he's have had such an incredible playoffs. Like yeah. in game three and four, it was like, all right, well, like the Nuggets won, particularly in game four, like in spite of Anthony Edwards having a really good game, like they still didn't have an answer to him. They completely nullified him in this. Like, yeah, he, yeah, and yeah. and you're right. Like, it, it, at first it was just like forcing him to make take bad shots, forcing him to turn the ball over. But then it was just like, man, your body language does not look good. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah. It, you're like, he's um, he's he's a confidence player. Like, you yeah. know, he he gets into a rhythm. He gets the other team riled up against him. You know, like mm. he's a performer. Mm. And I think like the second you can kind of get into his head, I don't I'm not, I don't want to be like, oh, he's got a bad mindset because yeah. he absolutely doesn't. Yeah, and he's, he's twenty two. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, he's, and you're being defended by like two of the best <laughs> playoff defenders, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, in the league. You, and then like 
even the Justin Holiday minutes are looking fine on yeah, Anthony yeah, Edwards yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But like, I think that. Bro, you want to talk about offensive rating on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but like I, that. Just, I think we should give the Denver Nuggets team credit for that, where it's yeah. like, well, okay, you're not going to be able to defend us like you did in game one and two. You're also not going to be able to score as easily as you have in games one through four. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and last thing I want to talk about, unless you have any other points yeah. afterwards, is the game finished, went to, uh, you know, went to the Shaq and Chenny. <laughs> Chuck and whoever it went to everyone right yeah. it went to TNT uh, I fully just forgot how to say Chuck and Sha- Chuck and Shaq and Kenny yeah what the fuck <laughs> um, so yeah went to them and they were like look at this stat you know this he, Jokic is the second player in NBA history to have 40 10 and 0 turnovers mm. in the playoffs and the first player <laughs> and the first player was Christopher Paul but both the both offensive players were doing it against Rudy Gobert. Ah, yeah, that's and right. And Draymond yeah. Green was like, wow, really did it twice. Like, <laughs> Draymond Green was just having a fucking field day about <laughs> X, Y, and Z. And, like, Draymond Green, like, yeah, I think he does as good a job as Rudy mm. on on uh, Nikola Jokic, which is, when he posts you up, he's going to score. And, yeah, like, yeah. Draymond's, like, obviously plays a, a, lot, a lot more of a mental game than Rudy Gobert when he's playing defensively, and that can be like, look, I'm going to fail the fuck out of you this one time and say, like, don't post me up again and stuff. Rudy is like, oh, you've just scored on me? That's okay. Like, I did everything I could. Yeah. Like, that's, they're, they're two different players. They obviously don't get along whatsoever. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on the whole, you know, Draymond Green in a fucking suit talking shit to Rudy Gobert who's in, you know is one of the three best teams in the West. Nah, like, come on. <laughs> I think I think I'm at the end of my my personal Rudy Gobert cycle where like <laughs> Lucas just finished this actually. Yeah. Worst time. <laughs> um where like he, I I I fully accept that he's a great defender, but like he has never been He's been put in really bad circumstances, like, and, and maybe that is just like Rudy Gobert can never be on a championship winning team. Maybe yeah, that, maybe yeah, that's yeah. just it, right? Like Derek Jones Jr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, like Utah, right? Yeah. He he anchored like a league best defense, and then he would always look bad in the playoffs. Yeah. They did not have any good defenders on that team. Like, you yeah, know, were, like Jones maybe. Yeah. Mike and, Conley. What? Yeah, Mike Mike Conley. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what Royce O'Neal? Like yeah. Royce O'Neal is your Jaden McDaniel's. Then like you're not you're not yeah. going anywhere, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I I genuinely think that he just held that team together. You know, like as like during the regular season and then in the playoffs it was like oh we just don't have the personnel to like replicate yeah. that the, and then in this series it's like you're going up against Nikola Jokic like there just isn't I just don't think there's a way you can defend him like right, right, right. with this current Denver Nuggets roster like right so maybe are you saying you're on Draymond's side no nah, I'm on Rudy's side you're on Rudy's <laughs> yeah, side yeah, right yeah. right well I mean if there's I'm anyone not, he's gonna def- like because obviously when he was in Utah they got mashed up against Houston Rockets yeah, twice yeah. in a row right mm. James Harden was just like give me the fucking tall French cunt Who's got him? All right, come set us Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, that's and that's yeah, different. And, well, yeah, like, yeah, PJ Tucker's the five on that yeah, team, yeah. team or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, Draymond shut up, like, you, you know, you, yeah, you yeah. didn't make it out of the play I mean, but, but, but Draymond, Draymond shut up, but also Draymond, when when James Harden called for a screen on his man, or the man yeah, next to him, he yeah, would say, hey, switch so I can get him. Yeah, yeah. And he was versatile enough to do it. But I'm always, I'm going to say, Draymond Green's a better playoff defender than Rudy Gobert. It's yeah, like, right. you know, every day of the week and twice on Christmas. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Three times yeah. on Sunday. But, yeah. You know, yeah, he's, what, six, 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 seven. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, always had like the length and the agility to like keep up with anyone one through five mm. he's like you know he's fine as a center like yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, you're yeah. not he's, you're not gonna have like elite rim protection like you do with a, yeah. a rudy or a brook lopez or anything like that but it doesn't matter because like the payoff is like when the point guard gets switched on to him it's a bad possession for the point guard yeah like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's like he's not gonna win four dp wise because the stats just you can't argue that yeah the stats. like like how Kawhi, it's it's hard to argue like Kawhi Leonard versus Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. But he's always going to have to default to the center at the end. Yeah, of the yeah, exactly. Um, and and yeah, and Draymond's even more intangible. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's it's much more like 
yeah, the holding everything together. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, like yeah, I'd much rather Draymond Green in a you know if I'm holding yeah, yeah. a playoff roster. Like uh, I I agree with you. Like, at the end of the day, like Draymond, you're you're not in the playoffs. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it's it's not it's not because you're like it's not because your team's tanking mm. or some shit. Like you literally couldn't you couldn't yeah, stop no. LeBron and AD. No. Like, no, no. Uh, who knows? We lost to the Kings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has, well, has Draymond has Draymond played Jokic in the playoffs? Yeah, yeah. There was that one series where they didn't have Jamal. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not fair, man. Yeah, and then it, actually it was the, the year before we won the title. Yeah, 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 yeah we that's right. That's right. I was thinking about it today. Jokic, when those two years they didn't have Jamal... Mm. Um, hard to win when you don't have your second best player like that's and no one's going to blame him for not winning those but he got he was like yeah there's, and there's the knocks that he like just doesn't care about basketball mm. but he was really passionate where yeah. like he was uh, I think he had like a really hard foul on like Jordan Poole or something mm. super frustrated there was obviously against the Phoenix Suns when he was without Jamal mm. like you know Devin Booker's known to be a prick and was getting under his skin yeah, yeah. and um, he just whacked uh, a campaign across the face remember that yeah, 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 yeah. got ejected and he's like Fuck, I'm off man and he just said to his brothers beat the fuck out of the nearest <laughs> fan you can find right and I, I want to I think I might have even messaged or if I did I forgot to message the boys and be like isn't it crazy how like his brothers just don't beat people up when he wins because <laughs> there was obviously the stuff against the Lakers where they lost a game and the, yeah. the Jokic brothers just boom <laughs> um, I wonder if the league's still reviewing that footage <laughs> uh, because we it's have the, it's at the bottom of the slash pile I'll we'll get to it eventually that's such a fucking Adam Silver thing where it's like oh my god here's the footage of this bad thing that's happened yeah. It's currently under investigation. But what the fuck? We don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like, gone. what are you going to do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just gone now. It's yeah, like, yeah. like, maybe they got fined. They're not going to get banned. Like, yeah, nobody cares anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think it's interesting on that point of like, oh, like, you know, he doesn't care about basketball or whatever. They're like, Jokic after he won the championship and he's like, oh, I'm going to play with my horses. Yeah. And everyone's like, I just kind of doesn't even care about it. Yeah. Jokic in those two seasons without Jamal, like, it was like, he's the only guy on the Denver Nuggets who yeah, cares about yeah. basketball. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like before KCP. It was like yeah. just him. It was, yeah, it's... it's Him, I, Will Barton, like... Or Aaron Gordon. From, yeah. Yeah, I really, I really don't like that, that whole, like, that he doesn't care about yeah. basketball. Because he used to be, he used to be overweight for an NBA player mm. and he used to fail people that would now be a transition take fail. Yeah. And he used to just get put out on an island and then go, look, look, I contested Steph Curry. And then just stand there and go, well, look, I'm done. And they're like, look, if you want to win, you have to work really hard to run out and then run back. And we saw in games three, four, and five, yeah, he sprinted out to um, Tony Edwards and he was there and he like stayed fast afoot to stay in front of him and then sprinted back to two lob threats behind yeah, him. Like yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's putting in so much effort. Mm, mm, mm. It's, yeah, it is. <laughs> He's putting in so much effort, but then like he just loves horses. Yeah. Like he can't knock that though. No, no, no. Yeah. But yeah, like he he obviously wants to win so badly. Like yeah. I think that, yeah. After game two, it was like oh maybe he'll just be happy to give up and go home. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. fuck, of course not. Yeah, like, yeah. You know? Do you, do you see? And I know we recorded a week ago, and we were like fucking wolves, man. The wolves can't win a title, and here we are. Obviously, now it's like three two. Do you see any world in which this goes to seven or nah? Like, uh, like if you let's say you put a percentage odds on that it goes to seven, or if the Wolves win, uh, going to seven, I'd put like fifteen percent on. Oh, uh, I'm thinking like five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> but like I, I think I think there's a game six scenario where the Wolves just get lucky hot, enough yeah. and like yeah, like they get hot on offense and also like maybe maybe Jokic just can't get on Rudy enough early on and then mm. it, you know and then it kind of gets away from them yeah. but like I also just don't believe that at all yeah, like the, yeah, yeah. The, the fact that yeah what the Wolves did what they did in game one and two and everyone was like this is how you beat the Nuggets Tim mm. Connolly's been planning this for yeah, years yeah. man <laughs> like he's a genius yeah um, and then like they just dismantled it immediately basically it's like well then like I don't know what the counter is there isn't like a new mm. there isn't a new game plan yeah it's, it's all been <laughs> yeah and that's what's cool about playing yeah. series like it's all it's all done yeah Um, just before we finish up uh, Tim Connolly like fucking more power to him he through his agent I'm sure had a report where it's like yeah I'd be the GM of the Minnesota of the Detroit Pistons if I just get absolutely blown away dollars wise <laughs> he's fully, he actually say he that? fully he didn't say it but his agents were like Tim Connolly would consider leaving if it's like 
an absurd amount. Really? Of money. Yeah. That's so funny. How good, but I can imagine <laughs> just being like, I've actually just built two title contenders. If you want to give me more money than I can yeah, even dream yeah. of, I'll do it for you. <laughs> What would you do on the Detroit Pistons? Man, the Detroit Pistons love throwing money at the problem. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much is Monty Williams earning over the next five years? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and they, they tried to interview John Horst, the, yeah. the architect of the Bucks, who mm. was kind of being nudged out in a power struggle. Hey, John Horst, um, now this is also coming out because his agent was trying to get him yeah, to interview yeah, yeah, for yeah, different yeah. jobs, but he wanted to hire Nick Nurse for the Milwaukee Bucks. Really? How good oh, would that have been? been so good. Yeah. Man. Oh god, man! It, ah, Nick, it would have been so good. Nick Nurse, like I, I like this Philadelphia seventy six team. Nick Nurse is wasted on the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I fully like. I, I, I have enjoyed watching Philly basketball for the first time in years. Mm. And Daryl Morey came out in these post post season press conference and was like, uh, Tyrese, Joel, and Nick Nurse are untouchable. Yeah, and right. He full said those three names are untouchable. So kind. So yeah, which wow. is which is pretty cool. Wow. Um, all right, let's let's take a quick dunny break. Cool. This episode of the Deep Two is presented by Gelateria Bico, the official gelato of the Deep Two. Gelateria Bico, handmade gelato in the heart of Brunswick. You want to talk WNBA? Maybe some WNBL, Australian Opals chat. Heck, even dabble in some Euroleague. Find the W Basketball Show on the Deep Two Podcast Network. And we're back. Um, fucking a lot of shit happened with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I messaged you this morning uh, and said, hey man, put together a run sheet, talk about Nikola Jokic, maybe we'll talk about Dallas OGC and then we'll just go through the news. And you're like, sick man, I've seen some good news. It'll be a good one. The top of the news was an article that came with quotes from Brian Windhorst of ESPN. And this was in one of his TV shows yesterday, Mm -hmm. that said that Donovan Mitchell's situation has been closely watched and multiple teams are preparing a, quote, huge offer to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then that, I I was thinking that at 10.30 a.m. And then by like three, I was like, man, a lot of shit's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Presumably because they got knocked out of the playoffs. Yeah, actually, that that is the point of difference. It wasn't just the passage of time. <laughs> but good timing nonetheless. Yeah. In an article from Shams Charania, Joe Varden and Jason Lloyd of The Athletic, I've only ever written an, an article by myself, but <laughs> that's okay. Um hey, me and Lucas have collabed, so you know, we're in the true, same we're true. in the same company wrote, as Shams. I wrote, I wrote one with fucking Alex. Oh, yeah, you did. Come on, man. Um so it's there was a report well, there were multiple reports, but one of them said that Darius Garland could seek a trade from the Cleveland Cavaliers if Donovan Mitchell extends and then it was a bit like, oh, okay, so it's now one or the other. Mm. Uh, and then there was the Cavs considering a, quote, dismissal of JB Bickerstaff coming from the athletic report. Uh, and I wrote here that this would be, JB would be the first African-American coach to be dismissed. It's, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> In the shot clock era. <laughs> um, although it, it maybe, maybe it's a bit of sign of the times by Bob Dylan that Frank Vogel was fired. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's flipping. Oh, this woke nonsense. <laughs> Add it again. Frank Vogel fired because of woke. Yeah. <laughs> and then, in that report, they say, Mitchell's odds of re-signing with the Cavaliers is believed to be increasing. Uh, and then it goes on to say that, quote, Donovan is playing... Oh, no, there was actually a quote from his teammate earlier in the season. Uh, Donovan is playing for his legacy as a winner, and that's all he wants to do. And then that, whenever you see like Shams write some shit like this, where it's like, okay, you're reporting it, yeah, but you're yeah. just saying. But yeah, yeah. he said that the Cavaliers could look very different around Mitchell with a potential dismissal of JB Bickerstaff and a trade of Darius Garland. I wonder where that came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is this. The, I didn't think it was going to go this way. I mm. thought it was just going to be miserable. Like nothing happens in Cleveland. I thought it was just going to be miserable. Like oh hey, like you know. Your superstar's gone, but mm. it's right. You traded for uh, Austin Reeves somehow, <laughs> and now you can actually like play him at the two mm. with Max Struess, and uh, that's a little bit of a fun thing. <laughs> at least it's good on two K. But now it's one or the other, mm. and I don't think that like Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell can't play together. They're a point guard and a shooting guard. And yep. I don't think Darius Garland is like missing out on so many opportunities as a lead ball handler next to a scoring guard. And I don't think the scoring guard is missing out on scoring opportunities next to yeah, Darius Garland. Yeah. Um, Darius Garland, worth mentioning, his agent, uh, Rich Paul of Clutch, is the one spearheading this movement, saying that he sort of he wants his player to get out there mm-hmm. and you know get get more opportunities for himself uh, where he he is the lead ball handler. 
Um, but yeah, well, what do you make of this, Marco? Yeah, <laughs> there's a there's a lot to take in. Um, there's a lot to consider. I mean, I think first it's worth like, I feel like this era of the Cleveland Cavaliers, like what Evan Mobley's rookie season when they were, like had like sneaky like the league's third best defense or something yeah. like that. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to be, like, really fun era. And, yeah, and, like, Darius Garland was breaking out. And it's like, all right, yeah. him, not Colin Sexton. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, this is going to be a really fun era for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, they're going to be one of those teams below the, like, other contenders in the East. Yeah. They make the Donovan Mitchell trade, and you're like, oh, that's huge. Like, yeah. that's exactly what you should do in this scenario. Like, you Worth mentioning that Brian Windhorst is like, I don't like it for them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I think... But then I think in that that sorry I just need to backtrack for a second in that first season with Evan Mobley yeah. they didn't make the playoffs did they like uh, I, I think they made the play in and then they fizzled out yeah and they had yeah. that they had bad run of injuries at the end of the season they had because they were playing Larry Markin and Evan Mobley yes. and Jared oh Allen. my god wasn't that fun and god. then the two the might, pre the pre uh, most improved Larry season like it might, yeah and it might have even been pre Karis Levert trade I think. yeah 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 so yeah. their two would have been like Chetty Osman and no nah, wasn't it um uh Isaac Okoro yeah yeah, yeah he got the start yeah, I think so I think it, was, w- it was weird <laughs> Isaac Okoro yeah he would have been drafted the year before yeah. Ever Mobley yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then yeah yeah <laughs> and then it was like oh it's this fun team and then like yeah didn't make it out of the plane. Next season, Trevor Donovan Mitchell's like, Cavs are here, they've arrived. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't beat the Knicks in the first round. Yeah. Like, this season, like, uh, with, you know, we haven't spoken about it at all or watched much of it, but <laughs> with great difficulty, like, yeah. uh, beat a very, very young and experienced Orlando Magic uh, team. Yeah. Every game, every win of theirs, I, I watched a little bit of it. It was like, you're winning this game because, like, Pally Banco just has 12 to no knows. fucking idea yeah. what he's doing yeah. in the playoffs. Like, and no, no fault to him at all. Like, yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what your first playoff run looks like. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you don't have like another veteran, when, yeah, when the only veteran on your team is Joe Ingles, like, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, 36 yeah. year old Joe Ingles. Yeah. Um, so then it's like, like, this was a team everyone was like, wow, they did it. Like, LeBron left, they re- rebuilt really well. Yeah. Like, they're going to be like s- something to reckon with in the East for a long time to come. Now it's like, I think if either, I think if, if it is like one or the other and they trade Garland and they get like a good return for it, it's like, well, how much better can you be than this season? Like yeah, you can get yeah. a more complimentary player yeah. next to Donovan Mitchell, but like, are you going to get a better player than Darius Garland? No. Mm. And then if you trade Donovan Mitchell, it's going to be for maybe what young player, heaps and heaps of picks. Yeah. Um, is it heaps though? Like, cause he'll be... <laughs> He would have one year left in his deal. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's it. Then it's yeah. like, not only do you not have your own picks, but then you only have like a handful of someone else's picks yeah, who's yeah, probably yeah. going to be good because they just traded for Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, it's, a, it's a bit, it's a bit shit that like, <laughs> well, I think what we all looked at as like really good team building has just not really eventuated into much. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And I, th- I think when they traded for Donovan Mitchell, it was like, oh, you have to make your swing. You're never going to get a free yeah. agent. And like, they did actually get Max Struess. Like, yeah. Yeah. Max Struess was like one of the best three and D wings on the market. And like for that mid-level exception money, but they got it. Yeah. Which, and, um, I was sort of like, like tongue in cheek, quite excited for him to slide up to the two when Donovan Mitchell leaves <laughs> for like a collection of like peanuts. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit sad that you've brought her all the way back to like when they were just like a burgeoning yeah, playing team yeah. because it, yeah, they, they were so hopeful mm. and now it's like, cause oh, I mean, I really like Darius Garland yeah. and now it's like, man, like if they lose Darius Garland and like this, this you know say what you will about how, how like trade scars stay like you know like Jonathan Kaminga requested a trade this year and then we started him and he averaged 19 points yeah, a game yeah, right yeah, yeah. but like you know if if Darius Garland's like well fuck it like you know I don't want to be here whether it's with or without Donovan Mitchell mm. like if, if Donovan Mitchell does leave and then it's like oh, okay well you're actually just going to be winning 45 games a year yeah. do you want to stay there like you're quite a good player there's actually a team in San Antonio that needs a point guard mm. really badly who can shoot and pass and you can actually play there for the next 15 years, I reckon, right? Like, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's sort of all exploding. And then it's like, well, Jared Allen, he's trade definitely tradable on his contract. Mm-hmm. I don't know who wants a center, but whatever. And then it's like, well, it's just the Evan Mobley show. And we've, we've seen that he yeah. can't score enough. No, right? no. And, like, I, I, again, like, I like Evan Mobley, but, like, I, he's just not... He's not the sort of promise 
you know, mm. that he was when he was drafted, I think, where it's like, oh, he's got amazing defensive skills, he'll be a DPOY, blah, yeah, blah, 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 which yeah, he yeah. still could do. Yeah. But, but he, and then he'll develop all that offensive stuff and say, nah, he's probably just going to be like a really, really good defensive center. You know? Yeah, like, he, might, he, may, he might be like a very poor man's Jaron Jackson on offense, yeah, but Jaron yeah. Jackson on defense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Such, such a poor man's <laughs> Jaron Jackson. Yeah, yeah. And Jaron Jackson won like 20 games as the go-to <laughs> offensive option <laughs> yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's grim. Um, mm. We can go through some Donovan Mitchell trades uh, in a little second but mm. I messaged Jackson a friend of the program who's a Spurs fan immediately mm. I would just love Darius Garland on the Spurs yeah. like, there was obviously it was like do you want Dejounte or do you want Trey but Darius Garland is the point like just such a pass first guard who can shoot off the dribble mm. It's and like someone who's young enough to be on that timeline mm. next to Wemby I love that fit. Have you thought about that that like that destination or any other destination? Nah, I've, I've only thought about San Antonio. Yeah, really. yeah. Like, you didn't think about Golden State? <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> but we can trade the Chris Paul salary slot for him actually, and if we want to put right. all of our we'll roll out Darius, Steph, Darius, <laughs> Andrew <yeah>. Wiggins. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just tradable. It's, it's like getting it's like getting D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, yeah right. right. I see. I see. I so see. we can trade for Andrew and then Wiggins he'll again. turn into Andrew Wiggins again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, no, nah, it, it just, it, it feels, it feels like much in the same way that like, oh, the Cleveland Cavaliers are this good young up and coming team. Uh, they should just make the trade for Donovan Mitchell because he's available and he might never be available again. Mm. The same way it's like San Antonio has to get one of these point guards this off season. Don't I don't think? know. Not at you all. Think so? No, no. I think there's this massive early, early, like young Anthony Davis potential. With the yeah. Ah, oh, true. I, okay, okay, I, okay. I said on the quick time with Sean Carroll, I hope they draft at a four and eight. I hope mm. they pick two prospects, just roll the dice, but you've got those two prospects. You've got like your Malachi Brenham's of the world. You know that Dre Jones and Devin Vassell are good. And Jeremy Sohan's good as well. Like just like just get all these dudes who are going to be under contract mm. for eight years, and if one of them turns into Jamal Murray, if one of them turns into Donald, yeah. Mitchell, but wouldn't you wouldn't you just get Darius Garland? You know. <sighs> See, like I say, like, I'm very excited. Like let's say the trade is four and eight plus. Like what's the salary like? Yeah, four and eight plus. Ah, fuck! I don't know. Who cares? Zach Who cares? Collins or something. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> maybe like Calvin Johnson. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like something not too desirable. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, Zach Collins isn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, then are you, you going to make the because all of a sudden then it goes from okay, well the Spurs have to make the playoffs yeah, next season, yeah, and it's like, well, yeah. the Warriors just missed the playoffs, mm. the Kings just missed the mm. playoffs. Those two teams might be better than Wemby and like and one other good player. Yeah. Whereas if you draft and you're like, like Wemby's not going to request a trade two years from mm. now. Like if Wemby requests a trade, it's going to be when he's on a full contract, which is going to be three years after this and then years after that. Yeah, it's just just slow play, I think. Yeah. But Darius Garland would be such a good fit next to <laughs> like, Yeah, I know. Like it's... he's full, you know, uh, he's already done really well next to two like pretty well one one dimensional and one not that good offensive yeah, center yeah, yeah. you know like I just can't imagine how lethal he would be next to Wemby yeah. and then yeah and then like Wemby's gonna Wemby's gonna open the floor up for him yeah. uh, Wemby's gonna cover for him on defense as well yeah. you know and, and you know you can bring in like a, a better offensive option yeah. ahead of Darius Garland and yeah. it's like oh he is a pass first point yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, like getting yeah. Mike Conley yeah whereas like yeah you're gonna get a, a, a young Mike Conley and it's like if you get a scoring wing it's not mm. gonna be like Donovan, uh, Darius Garland is not gonna be like oh fuck it I wanna shoot more because yeah. it's not who he is He's yeah exactly guy. right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, but you are right I, I think more what I was saying would be like oh you have to do it this off season it's like the Cavs didn't have to do it that off season yeah <laughs> you know? yeah like, yeah true true <laughs> Yeah, like it's, if you want to, if we want to like litigate the Donovan Mitchell trade, I think you'd do it. But it's also like maybe you maybe you figure out if you actually can play over Mobley and Jared Allen, you know, together. Like, yeah, or, while not while also not trying to integrate yeah, this other guy yeah. as well. Or, or maybe you like <coughs> get anyone who can play the three at an NBA level. Like. Yeah, yeah, maybe you wait for that, or maybe yeah. like you trade for Cat two years and st- yeah, yeah, instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's but tricky. When was the last time we saw like a big wing, like who could fix like? 10 teams ailments change hands like OG Ananobi <laughs> yeah yeah but I'm, I'm more like like let's say Paul George changes yeah, 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 right? yeah like yeah. who's 
Who's someone like Paul? Who? Because everyone's got a, everyone's got a hole of the three, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. maybe like Andrew Wiggins was. Andrew mm. Wiggins was like a yeah, yeah. But he, it's not like he was traded at the time for that exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. know. Like, well, yeah. I guess, yeah. Portland kind of ruined their franchise, like trying to yeah, <laughs> try, yeah. trying to bring yeah. threes in for years and years, and or just squish twos into the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Norman Powell not actually a defensive three. No. no. <laughs> um, all right. I've put together some fake trades. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just say whether you, who who you think would say no. Uh, first one is Donovan Mitchell to the LA Lakers, and when I say Donovan Mitchell, it could be Donovan Mitchell and like a little bit this, yeah, yeah. but I'm mainly saying that there's nothing leaving Cleveland mm. apart from Donovan Mitchell uh, for Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, Jalen Huchafino, and 25, 28, and 30 firsts from uh, owned by the LA Lakers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who says no? There? I think. I think the Cavs would probably... I think they'd consider this, but I think they'd probably say no. Like, yeah, yeah. The Lakers first are just... I mean, I just don't think they're worth... They're worth... The an, paper they're enough. printed on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, like, um, th- those players are just much of a muchness when you're well, losing, losing Donovan Mitchell. Like, yeah, well, oh, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, Max Struess moves to the two and Austin Reeves comes off the bench <laughs> and then Rui Hachimura is there as well as, yeah, like, you yeah. know, their first... Then, uh, yeah, Ch- Chetty Osman Light or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or you could you could put Reeves at the two and move Max Strews down to the three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see how that works. <laughs> um, the, there is also with that like. Let's be honest. If if the Lakers want that trade to happen, it'll happen. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like if Donald Mitchell says I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he finally wants to go play in the, the big market he's always talked about. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, I think the Lakers might be able to throw one more, uh, like a, another pick swap into mm, this. Mm. But then it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, pretty much four years of draft control. Yeah. For Donovan Mitchell, who's on a one year contract after, I like, assume he picks up his player option. And then, yeah, I guess you're LA, you're going to re sign him. But then if you're him, or if you're the Lakers, are you worried that LeBron's going to retire? But then, like... What are you doing? Well, yeah, Donovan Mitchell and Anthony Davis are not even yeah. on the same timeline, you know? Yeah. Because then it's like, all right, Le- LeBron retires, your two best players are Donovan Mitchell and Anthony Davis. That might be okay. Like, yeah. that might be an okay... Like, you're not going to win a championship from there. You'd be like, like the Cavs in the West. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, like, Anthony Davis is, what, three, five years older than Donovan yeah, Mitchell? Yeah. And, like pretty brittle so like you're yeah. not you're not going to get a good run with those guys like you get two or three years max yeah. and yeah and then yeah and then you have not yeah like I don't know do the Lakers genuinely just have to start thinking about life after LeBron and not be like we're yeah. going to trade our 20 28 pick for yeah. like one more go with him well like, they haven't so fast maybe they already have <laughs> like seriously yeah legit um, yeah. next one uh, this was sorry the two I forgot to mention the two teams mentioned in Brian Windhorst's uh, tirade was that uh, was the Lakers, the Nets, and then they talked about the Knicks, but he's like the Knicks are focused on winning basketball yeah. tomorrow. As yeah, well. yeah, 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 like literally tomorrow, not the, <laughs> not the Royal tomorrow. Um, so the Brooklyn Nets, uh, Ben McSimmons plus four Phoenix first round picks, 25, 27, or twenty seven from Philly and twenty nine from Phoenix. Yeah. Um, the money also works if it's Cam Johnson and Dorian Finney-Smith. So take your pick out of what would what would you prefer? One year of Ben Simmons. <laughs> Or Cam Johnson DFS for well, Cam Johnson got three more years, but yeah, I mean probably Cam Johnson. DFS. Yeah, <laughs> like, who uh, who says no? I think I think the Cavs say no to that. Yeah, like, right. Um, again, like, uh, would you rather that Lakers package? Uh, you know what? I if if I am looking at it from a, like, all right, we are we're gonna go into like a semi rebuild or a retool. I prefer the Brooklyn package because yeah. I mean. Those Phoenix picks could be pretty good in a few years. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And, and <laughs> like, yeah, but like, yeah, Ben Simmons doesn't. Ben Simmons doesn't mean anything except no. salary. Yeah, like, yeah. No, nobody's going to give him another shot. I, I, I don't, I don't think. Yeah. If you, if you're trying to like, if if it is Ben Simmons plus the Phoenix picks, mm-hmm. and you're like, just give me the Phoenix picks. Would you waive Ben Simmons' eighty salary for the year so you don't have to play him? Because like, they've already <laughs> you got have two to play him anyway, right? right? He's, he's going to have a back injury true, or something. True, like, true, true. Yeah, he'll just wear his clothes. Prime Ben Simmons and Darius Garland could have been a fun little combo, you know? Like, oh, just, maybe I just guess. just defending defending two players for him. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm really trying to make it work. Yeah, yeah no, nah, the Cavs say no to that. Uh, New York Knicks could trade uh, Boyan Bogdanovic, Dante DiVincenzo, and their own 24, 26, 28, and a 29 spot first round picks. I haven't included the stupid Detroit, yeah, the stupid yeah, Charlotte yeah, picks because yeah. they don't, we, they don't exist. They, yeah. they literally yeah. don't. <laughs> um, yeah, so Bogdanovic, DiVincenzo, and four New York firsts. Um, or you can sub out these two players for Mitchell Robinson, but then you've got three starting yeah, no, centers. Yeah, I don't want Mitchell Robinson. Um, I no, I think the Knicks say. I think the Knicks say yes to this. Yeah. I think if you can turn Dave Vincenzo, who's been like really good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, into yeah. Donovan Mitchell, you do it mm. for every single day of the league. Um, and like Bogdanovich, Bogdanovich has been fine for them, but he's not. You know. He, it's not like you can't get another player like him for nothing, yeah, you know, yeah. for a second round or... or well, you that's, know. that's what they did. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I think the Cavs might approach saying yes on this. Like, I don't I, know. I, I think I would much rather one of the Phoenix or Lakers first yeah, than yeah, yeah. any... Because the, the Knicks might be good for a decade yeah, here. It's true. It's like very they, true. They seriously might be on a hot streak and yeah, they're just yeah, doing yeah, things yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But do you think, like... All right, of the of the players you mentioned, do you think Devin Chenzo is the best? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is which is pretty crazy. To say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, he, yeah, he. If if you were like, no, nah, no, nah, we're just gonna try with Darius Garland in the centers, you yeah. just start Devin Chenzo at the two, you know, or, oh, or yeah. have him come off the bench, or like, you well, know. you put him at the two and slide yeah. next to the <laughs> to the three. <laughs> We keep ending but, up here for some reason. Yeah, and then you've got you've got Boyan coming off the bench. Yeah, like if, if you're trying to win 45 games. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, is this the best? I mean, like, yeah, fucking Rui. I mean, sorry, Re, Reeves and DiVincenzo. <laughs> Fuck, that might be pretty close, Reeves and DiVincenzo. I think DiVincenzo is better. So. Yeah, but financially, Reeves, oh, yeah, yeah, Reeves yeah. is getting paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and yeah. he wears purple and gold yeah he's got that he's got that bump doesn't he uh, and then final team I, I mocked up here was the Atlanta Hawks trading Dejounte Onyeka Okongwu and the first overall pick oh okay for in Donovan a bad Mitchell. draft <laughs> <laughs> or would you like to remove Dejounte Murray from this and make it Clint Capella and then just th- like reroute Clint Capella to Charlotte for free um, so it's a Kongwu and a first the first <laughs> for Donovan Mitchell who says no Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, I think the Cavs <laughs> say no to that. Really? It, well, this draft's so bad. <laughs> like they've got a center at the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like you're, you're you're bringing in another big, and then like, what if you trade? You also trade Jared Allen to the Charlotte Hornets. So yeah, they've got two right, centers, right, right. and then and you've you... got Saar and Mobley. Yeah, right. Gosh. Doesn't entice you? No, it does not entice me <laughs> at all. <laughs> You'd have two centers and two point guards yeah. on the roster. Doesn't um. Doesn't Sa Sa's also only the presumptive first yeah. overall because the Atlanta Hawks <laughs> have that pick, you know, like yeah, uh, like yeah. it, it really solidified him as the first yeah, overall. Yeah, they're like yeah. that's that's the fit. Yeah, fuck, I don't know if Atlanta uh, like is Trey and Dimitch just like juiced up Darius Garland to Dimitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I just thought of something. What if it's um maybe like Jalen Green and the third pick mm, far out again like <laughs> it's a bad draft <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then you've got Darius Garland Jalen Green let's say you draft a four yeah yeah yeah, yeah one yeah. of those ones that can't shoot and might play the four Actually, instead of the three I don't mind that as much because Darius Garland Jalen Green Evan Mobley are all on similar timelines yeah. so like you can kind of afford to then be the six seed or whatever, yeah, like yeah. on that team. But like, I also don't like Jalen Green. Oh, he was um, good for a month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also, what is that a bit? Is that a bit of like bringing Sexton back? You know, like nah. <laughs> like so, yeah. bring out like a kind of young ball dominant guy who's gonna eat up, eat up. Um, right, well, and then Rich Paul gets mad and then requests a trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden you have the fucking Jalen Green show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you want to pay Jalen Green his next contract? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. at the moment, it's like, oh, you just had a shit month, man. Like, yeah. you actually just shot 10% from the field. <laughs> but it's all right. You're on your rookie contract. You're yeah. allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, as soon yeah. as he's making fucking 20 mil to do this. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah Fuck. massive massive Norman Powell vibes yeah and also once you trade for Jalen Green like you'd be like I want Jalen Green like you know? yeah, yeah. so like the Houston Rockets being like ah blast well <laughs> yeah <laughs> we drafted yeah. them and then we spent all of our uh, you know salary salary on okay role players so like yeah, we, right. we kind of have to extend them and do what we can <laughs> yeah so I so the Cavs say no mm, I yeah. think so yeah third pick yeah because like when we look at the Lakers picks and the Phoenix picks, we're like, oh, what if what if they're good picks? Mm. Like, there's a, there's a yeah, massive that's, chance that's they're not really one true. Three. That's so true. That's so true. That's so, so true. <laughs> but there's multiple of them, you know? <laughs> I don't know why you get more chances of three. Yeah. It's like, no, Mark, I'm telling you, it's, it's one. <laughs> I can't get it out of my head that, like, like, you know, if you had the third pick in last year's draft, you probably would have taken it. Yeah, and, yeah, and this year yeah. it's just like, nah, there's just no one. Which is crazy because the last time the there was no one was 2013 and Anthony Bennett went one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there was Victor Oladipo, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Stephen Adam, mm. Rudy Gobert. Mm. Yeah, Maybe yeah, even yeah, yeah. fucking Jokic and that. Right? But, and the trick is just to get the 14th pick in a bad draft yeah. and that's where you get your MVP. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, um, so true. <laughs> um, yeah, I, but I like if Donovan Mitchell. The, well, so at the moment, it's leaning that he's going to resign. That's that's what that's what we're being fed. At yeah, least. that's what we've been told. Yeah. The last point of contact was that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means Darius Garland's moved. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So then it's like you know, um, at, like ultimately the Cavs are going to have to accept a package like this. Like I don't think there's a good package out there. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you know, yeah. for Garland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like if it's four and eight mm. from the Spurs, what does Donovan Mitchell want that from four and eight? Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. right. And exactly if it's right. What if it's three and Fred Van Vliet? <sighs> he could be happy with that. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. maybe. I don't know. This it's it's pretty shit. Yeah, for the Cavs, <laughs> yeah. like it's uh, yeah. This, yeah, this is the shortest end of the stick. A hundred percent. And <laughs> and when you know they traded away all those picks for Donovan Mitchell, it was like, nah, you you do that. Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you have to do that. And now it's like, oh well, that, that hasn't paid off. It yeah. hasn't paid the dividends you're expecting it to at the very least. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you've done it. Yeah. Anyway, they should try just not having injuries. I reckon. Oh, it's <laughs> much easier. Yeah. Or just like turn your turn your um, power forward into like a legitimate score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, easy, yeah. bro. Everyone no way, everyone does doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um. Anyway, Marco, thank you very much for coming on the Deep Tomio podcast. Uh, I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, Sean. The Jeff and Gundy Tribute Show is your fortnightly dose of the lighter side of basketball, hosted by me, Marco. And me, Lucas. We take a more laid-back approach, talking about the NBA, the WNBA, FIBA basketball, culture, whatever tickles our fancy or grinds our gears. The show is filled with great guests, classic gags, and a healthy dose of tangents in honour of the great man himself. The Jeff Van Gundy Tribute Show, fortnightly on the Deep 2 Podcast Network. You know, love's just talking about the league, certain things like that.